Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mesonier Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at five of my favorite little color tricks to make things pop out and feel, you know, a little bit cooler. So, in Resolve, the first one we've got, we've got this, you know, I guess step zero, shoot a pretty girl. People will think you're good. Okay, but then step one. This is probably my favorite one on the list. The rest of them are in no particular order, but this one is something that will really make your grade stand out. People will be like, whoa, you know what you're doing. And that is adding contrast to just the skin. So it's really great to just be able to pull a nice key of your subject skin. We're not going to bother with masking off this other garbage because who really cares? At the end of the day, that's kind of a lot of stuff though. So we'll tweak this up. We're going to bring that away some. We don't need quite all that. We will narrow this down. Yeah, we'll call that probably good enough. How we feeling there? Bring this down. No, this up. Yeah, bring that up a little bit. Okay, uh, we'll call that good enough. Um, let me just blur it way the heck out because it doesn't need to be a real exact one. If there's a little bit of a halo, that's actually, you know, kind of fine as long as it's not too much. We'll bring it back in just a little bit, and then you know that's probably fine. That's a good enough key for this. It doesn't need to be super spot on. Then we just add some contrast here. You'll see a talent starting to pop off the screen. Now this is a little bit hot exposure wise. We can change our pivot around to bring it back down to where we want it to be. I'll even add some more contrast just for tutorial's sake. And now whenever you add contrast this way, you can use curves if you want, but when you add contrast this way, it tends to increase the saturation some. So if you don't want that, scoot your saturation back down a little bit. Bring this pivot around, yeah. And there we go. So you can see for this one, before, you know, it's nice and, and flat and stuff, but now your talent really pops off the screen. You can be like, whoa, look how good that looks. Getting a little bit too much halo there for me. So I'm gonna bring the blur radius down some and that ratio in a little bit. There we go. So that's that's number one. Add contrast to just the skin or whatever is important in the shot. Um, you know, little like sub notes for this one. If you have this skin key already, something's great for ladies. She doesn't need it at all. But um, my favorite way to soften skin super fast is bring your mid-tone detail slider way down. So you see that's, you know, way too much. But let's say we bring it down to like, you know, minus 10 or so. That's you know, not too bad. So zero, minus 10 or so, you know, why not? Make her think we're nice. All right, so now the next little trick. This is something that's gonna be pretty subtle on this shot. So we're gonna do, you know, another, we're gonna do like two things. We're gonna do one, what you normally do if you're like a professional, and the other one is just like for fun if you're making a tutorial. So the first one, um, this whole thing is gonna be the hue versus hue curve. So very underutilized tool, especially for nailing skin tone. So Go right there, you see that's our skin. I'm gonna put another point over here whoop, because we're just gonna make it really nice and, and smooth. So if we look here, especially if we highlight this, we can see if we wanna, wanna do the scope things, you can see that, you know, we're just a, a little bit off where we wanna be. The scopes show red, but my eyes see yellow. So, you know, I'm gonna go with my eyes on this one and scoot this. A little bit further away from yellow. So yeah, this is what the scopes say, which I think is way too yellow. Just put it up, get it, give it a little blood in their skin, just a little bit. But you can see, it's just a nice little difference there. Hopefully you can see that on YouTube. You can see my scope moving a little bit. This is why I don't like using scopes too much, because here it's sort of bang on, and this just looks a little bit nicer to me, a little bit off especially for ladies. I like to let them go a little bit pink. You see that's just, you know, minus three. So since that's kind of a, a nuanced thing, another thing you can do with this is if you're shooting against trees and you're like doing something crazy, oop, that's, you can do this. You can make the trees go purple or pink or blue. I think that's a lot of fun. So I like doing that. So I'm gonna do that in this shot because I think that's very, I think that's very fun. And if you're doing like something surrealist, like a music video or something, you know, you can get away with that. And people are like, oh, cool, did you shoot that in Fred? And you're like, no, I just watched the tutorial. <laughs> All right, next one. I like to give just like a tiny bit of blur to everything that is not the subject. And you know, the subject is normally the subject's face. So here you're just gonna give a little qualifier window. If she moved in this shot, we would track it. But you know, we're banging through this tutorial pretty quick. So we'll get it pretty tight on here. You know, once again, this doesn't have to be super exact, but we're gonna call that, you know, pretty much good. And then we'll flip this. Might refine it a little bit later. Turn our overlay off, let's go to FX. 
and then we're going to apply. I like using lens blur. I think that that might be the studio version of Resolve only, but you definitely don't need to use lens blur. You can use whatever blur you want. I'm just a snob. I'll normally keep this around like two-ish, one, one or two, just a little bit. You see, you like pump it. It's a little bit much, but if you just bring it back a little bit, it just makes your sensor look bigger and, and your lens look nicer. And, you know, once again, it's a, it's a subtle little thing. Hope it's coming across. I'll, I'll bump it up a little bit, you know, for tutorial's sake. No, that's too much. Just a little bit. You can see, especially around her hair, that's sort of a lot. It's a bump back. Like I said, normally around two-ish is where I'm at with this. Just, yeah. Just sort of getting rid of stuff, which is nice. Go and refine my mask just a little bit for the fun of it. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could do an inside mask and, and sharpening, or I guess outside, inside. And same keyboard shortcut. So then, you know, if you really want to, I'll just do like this normal sharpening because that's fine enough. You know, just give her a nudge. No, that's actually really nasty looking sharpening. We'll do a real sharpen. Uh... S H A R P E N. Nice. Sharpen amount. Bring it way down. Back up just a little bit. Okay. Now our talent's popping. Just a little bit. Bring our fine details up some. That might not be good on a lady. Nah. We'll just do large details. There we go. Then the eyes pop a little more. That's probably a little bit much still, so I'll reduce the opacity some and I'll give it a little bit more of a dreamy look. Yeah, there you go. Then the eyes just pop out a little bit better. I will go ahead and decrease the mid-tone detail on this even more since we're adding some sharpening. Cool. So the next thing that I really like to do is, if you watch, I've been watching my tutorials for a while, you know this one, and that is add glow even when it doesn't need glow. Just because I like what it does a lot. So this is too much, but if you bring the shine threshold up a little bit, which is where it starts to glow, Bring the spread out a little bit. Bring the brightness down just a little bit. Now, you see just really like evening things out, smoothing it out, and then giving it a little bit of that dreamy quality, which I think makes it look really nice and you know a little bit filmy because you know film blooms because it's analog, so like stuff rolls off. And I shot this on the Ursa Mini, which does not roll off well in the highlights at all, but it's such a pretty image, it's worth shooting on anyway. It's just, you know, you can get a little clippy in the highlights, which we don't have any clippiness in the highlights now, but you know. Just, just an aside for shooting on that camera, you know, definitely underexpose with it. Actually, expose right on because <laughs> there's also the fixed pattern noise. Just always, always expose right. You don't have to worry about anything. All right, and the last thing is, I like to sometimes just add a little bit of a flavor LUT at the end. So you'll see a lot of people they'll like use LUTs for most of their grade. I like to just put a little bit of you know flavor. That's it's like you know Alzar, just bam, just a little bit of flavor. So. I am, of course, going to use the House LUTs pack. Since we already have some contrast and stuff added to the shot, I'm going to use the Rec. 709 version. And for this one, I think Cliché DSLR will look good. And then, you know, that's a pretty bold look right now. It looks cool if you're down with that. But I made the House LUTs to be dialed back. So just for flavor. So you dial it back some. You know, 50%, 40% around that area. And you see now it's just, you know, it gives it that nice little extra, extra niceness, extra color, you know, does some interesting things with like the area around her hair and now you know i think that's pretty nice one thing i'll probably also do do it in the node before this is not where you should actually put this but I'm just gonna bring our, our darks down a little bit just with our luminance curve this is not in the tips this is just for making the final shot look good so there you go it's just a little bit nicer so there you go those are five things that i like to do to make my shots look better um, you know, excluding our, our crazy, this thing, I'll just delete it for now. Excluding that thing, you know, it's a nice subtle little improvement to the shot besides, you know, our crazy little other thing. I think that looks pretty darn nice. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. You can get the House Let's Pack on MeesterMedia.com slash products along with some light leaks and lens junk. And there's a new Let Pack coming out soon that I'm just in the process of finishing up you know maybe in the next little bit be on the lookout for that and if you buy something before that comes out you may or may not be getting like a discount on the next thing which is very cool here's a quick little preview of of some of this look at all these look at all of these look at all of those there might even be more if i you know feel like it but look at all those so it's a little teaser 
Um, I probably already mentioned it, but subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring the little bell so you're notified whenever I put up a new video so you can learn tricks and tips from someone who is doing it so that you can do it. Follow the socials down in the description below if you feel like it. <laughs> One thing I can promise is it will not spam your timeline because I'm hardly ever on them. So once again, I'm Theo with Mies New Media. We have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.